the end in my hardcore world is, is kind of boring. Except for the 100 dragons that hang around. So I'm going to transform it into a massive new end hub. This means I need to remove absolutely everything. To do that, I'll need brand new farms, a brand new mob switch, and some pretty complicated machines. It has to be said, it is great to be back. And now that I'm past 4 million subscribers, the villager has been added to the collection. And in order to build this massive end hub, I'm going to have to sort out a pretty big problem. You'll see as I go through this portal, 100 ender dragons live here and, and they would just destroy everything. So I'll first go to my enderman XP farm to repair my elytra and all of my tools. That's all of that sorted. I'm chucking all these ender pearls in the void because I, I, I don't know what else I'll do with them. And I'll grab my bow, grab some arrows, and then get busy defeating every single one. That's the first one defeated. And my bow is just broke, but I did get the second one. So it's time I tried plan B. And that plan is to grab some slime, some TNT, and a bunch of redstone components. Next, I can use these to build a machine that will defeat the ender dragons for me. That's way better than having to do all the work myself. It's going to be a simple TNT cannon. This slime block will push the TNT towards them all. And this contraption that I'm building right here is where the magic will happen. Fairly simple contraption. I think that is all there is to it. Other than the fact that I need to hook this redstone up to this piston. And I forgot to bring the lever. One of the most important parts. I'm sure there's one in the end I can use. Yeah, this one here will do just nicely. Now, I have calculated this to be in the right position, so it should get the ones down there. But the moment of truth is now. Oh, they're going. Look at that. Some of them are just falling straight down, which isn't too big of an issue. But a lot of them are heading down. And are the dragons getting damaged down there? Yes, they are. Look at that. Fantastic. All right, we now have a weapon to defeat them all. And I just have to wait for ages and ages for them all to be defeated. It looks to me like quite a lot of them... Are, are in that moment of dying. Like, they're trying to do the animation, but to do it, they have to get to me. Is this, is this going to be the next problem? <laughs> I can only assume that if I turn this off, that'll let some of them get down to the bottom, because they do get knocked back from the TNT. And then they seem to be bouncing off these frozen ones in the area, so I, I suppose I have to get rid of them as well. This really is becoming more complicated than I thought it was going to. Getting rid of them will require a brand new infinity bow, and I might have the books for it already in here. Yep, flame, infinity, power five. You'll give me unbreaking three, at, at least you would if I had enough emeralds. So it's a good thing I have an unlimited supply of them right here. There you go. I'll do some combining. I'm not bothered about getting punched too, and you can't put mending and infinity on the same bow, which is very annoying. So what I have here will just have to do. Also just about kept above a thousand levels which is nice. And now I can get busy defeating these ones down here. That's you gotten rid of. You also look like you could be problematic to them and boost them upwards. So you also have to go. Look at them. There's two of them at the same time. That's just so cool. Three of them. Oh now they're all able to land. It's so cool to watch. And now this machine can be put back into action. Everything was running fine. The dragons are slowly getting less and less, you can't tell, but, but trust me they are. But then one of these dragons got flung into my machine and broke it, so I've, I've just got to fix it. And from that, normal service can be resumed. And it looks at this point like every single one that was perching has now gone. Which means this can be turned off, and it's just all these frozen dragons around the outside that now need to be removed. And my goodness, there seems to be a lot of them, so this <laughs> could be quite a challenge. Kind of satisfying to land hits on it like this, isn't it? Seems that when it comes to using your elytra and bows, this is the strategy to do it. I think I need to turn the entity distance right up just to be able to see. Okay, there's quite a lot dotted around, isn't there? Did not expect there to be this many. If I go ahead and reload the world, look, it starts to perch. And I've managed to do it if I, if I go near some other ones as well. They also start perching. So this could make life a little bit easier for me. Because it means I can just use the TNT machine on them. Basically it seems that any dragons that are above these obsidian blocks can fly back in and be unfrozen. And the ones that are below, well, they're stuck forever. Oh, my lights have gone. Uh, go panic. Whoa, that was close. That was very, very close indeed. That's why I carried a spare pair. This dragon was more trouble than it was worth. And I'm going to leave these four dragons alone because I plan to trap them in four different cages in my end hub. And so the next very, very fun task is to remove all of these obsidian pillars. Thankfully, I've got haste too, but it is still going to take me quite some time. I'm just going to make sure I don't make the same mistake as I did in the past and fall into the void. Although, as long as I'm careful and keep an eye on things, I, I should be fine. I've just realized I have run out of firework rockets. I do have the shulker box, but if I'd have been in the void and run out, that would have been a bit problematic, wouldn't it? And I've also completely run out of space for all the obsidian. I might as well keep collecting it up and chucking it in here. As I always think, you can never have too much obsidian. And this is it. I'm on the final pillar 
of this entire tower. Finally, it is mission accomplished. And there's no way I can do this for all the other towers. It would probably take me a year. A, a, a Minecraft year, that is. So I have a plan on how I'm going to do the rest. I just hope that it works. The plan is going to involve using withers because they are one of the few mobs that can break obsidian, but only in certain circumstances. So it's, it's going to be tricky. And I can't even think about building the machine until I have more wither heads. Thankfully for me, I have just the farm for that. So I'll get busy using it. Whilst being AFK at this farm, do you know what I've realized? I've realised that it's just too slow. Like, I've spent quite a bit of time here, and yes, there are mobs coming down, but I can make one that's so much better and so much quicker. And so that's what I'm going to do. Yes, I might be getting a little bit sidetracked, but I really think it has to be done. That farm's been there for nearly 6,000 days. It's definitely time for an upgrade. And considering I have an entire nether perimeter down here, I'm sure I can utilise it well to build a very, very fast farm. This right here is already a fortress farm. I've got it turned off at the moment, but it only spawns blaze and pigment. However, I can use a similar concept in these four chunks here to build the perfect farm. The only thing I am going to need to do it is a lot of nether brick. I will need other things as well, but that's the main thing I'll need to do it. And what do I have a lot of in a chest? Well, not, not nether bricks. Yep, I've got a few in here, don't you worry. Loads of bricks that can turn, be turned into nether brick blocks. And another thing that'll make this useful is it'll also get me plenty of coal, which I never seem to have enough of. I've, always, I've got loads of blaze rods for fuel, but coal always seems to kind of elude me. On top of the bricks and the temporary blocks, there is also going to be quite a few other items that I'll need, such as walls, which I can't see. Well, I can see the odd measly wall here and there, but not, not a proper amount of them, so that's something I'll just probably end up crafting. I could craft them out of stone, actually, because I think I have an infinite supply of those. I'm not going to bore you with the details of every single other item, because there is quite a few. That is everything. And when building this, I'm going to have to attempt to use my brain, which is never an easy thing, to make sure I get everything right and make it as efficient as it possibly can be. First things first, I'll craft a couple of stacks of these, grab some items, and find the centre point of these four chunks. I know I keep on the same level as this. Basically, it uses the fact that we're still in a nether fortress's bounding box, so if you place nether bricks, mobs can spawn on them. And this is going to be the middle point of the farm, so I'm going to have four chests. This is what the iron golem is going to be on. Now all these chunks need to be completely filled in with nether brick, which is why I originally needed so much of it. And now that the entire outline is done, I can fill in all of the middle. As I'm building this, I've realised something. Due to these redstone lamps, this part of the platform is going to be lit up. Those redstone lamps have to be on to switch off that farm. But then things won't spawn on this bit, so I'm going to have to move the entire farm a chunk in this direction. I was kind of trying to rectify it by placing netherrack in the way, but it's, it, it wasn't really working. And now I have the fun job of mining all these up and then collecting them on the bedrock. That's going to be kind of, You know what? I might just ignore them and leave them and forget about them. Because gathering blocks down here can be very, very tedious. Also, on the positive side, all the time that I'm here building stuff... My gold farm is working away just a little bit. The reason I know this is I, I could see stuff going across and being sent into that storage system down there. It's getting there, but I have run out of nether brick. So it's a good thing there's an entire fortress here that I can use to grab it all. And I'm also a little bit tired of mob spawning when I'm trying to build this, so I, I, I've got a plan for them too. I'll go back down this tunnel and then fly all the way along here to my mob switch. I've just got to activate it, I believe, by flicking that lever. And that should disable mobs from spawning anywhere in the nether. Yep, looks like it's working. I can now get back to building in peace. The only annoying side effect is the gold farm will no longer be in use, but it doesn't matter too much. I'd rather have that than have Blaze shooting me every two seconds. That's that all filled in. And now I can begin spawn proofing it so that magma cubes can't spawn. Wall posts will do that trick for me. Realise I once again haven't quite built this platform right. The border just needs to be removed so it's, there's a one block between the edge and the end of the chunk. Minor detail and thankfully very easy to fix. And now that's done, I can properly fill in all of the walls. It's basically just a massive grid that covers the entire platform like so. To get rid of pigmen, turtle eggs are going to go on each of the four corners. Now I can add more walls around here with blocks on top. And this is basically going to be the place that the iron golem is going to go. Let's spawn you and then I can get you trapped in. Now the beginning of the portal can be made. I also then need to add even more walls and top them off with slabs. This is going to allow the mobs to get up into the portal. And these repeaters will make it so that only the taller mobs can see the golem. All the other ones won't go for it. Now I can complete the portal. This bit is now completely done. And so I must now build up and make another portal directly above it. This is the spot. That's the AFK platform done. The other portal is going to be in this very spot. And this is where I'll be able to take out the mobs. This side's completely done. So now I need to go back to the overworld side so I can build the chambers 
that will send them through. Right about here is the spot. Now to get up to the correct height. That's one of the portals done. And it started raining. Well, that's not what I want to see. Thankfully, it's going dark, so I'll be able to sleep through it. But we're going to have another portal right here. And I don't know why I'm really spawn-proofing them, because there's no need to. But, but but anyway, I have done. Also, don't really need blocks behind it, because they're, they're going to teleport through. But just in case, I'm, you know what? You know what? Let's remove these, because... If for some reason they, they can't teleport through, at least these ones will be pushed, you know, down down there. So I'll add some slabs so that mobs just get automatically pushed upwards into it. I'm going to come over here, add myself three cobwebs, and head through here. Come walk through that door. And it should be working. In theory, this farm should be ready to go. These blocks are kind of annoying me. And the best way that I have to turn off the mob switch is just going to be to reload the world. Because that will mean that the chunks that the chunk loader are in are no longer loaded. That is that done. Lots of mobs should be spawning down below. And they are starting to come through, but I fear that because I haven't built this in the center of my perimeter, there may be some spawning spaces for other mobs that I need to remove. I think it's up here. I think this little area here is probably just in. And so I have the very fun task of heading back home, crafting a load of slabs, and spawn-proofing everything. And I'm pretty sure I have now spawn-proofed every single block. I don't really need to place me there, but I am anyway. Yeah, it should all be done. So, so many slabs. I'm going to actually struggle to get out of here. I've just got to go down like this. There's also a block on the edge here which needs to be removed. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, I think it's, I think that's all I need to do because of the height the way I've worked it out. I'm pretty sure that's out of it. Time will tell. I will just see how this farm performs. And they do seem to now be coming through much, much faster. So I'm glad all that spawn proof it wasn't for nothing. It's way better than that other farm I had at the other fortress earlier. And it should get me over a hundred heads per hour. So... I'm going to put that to the test. Well, this time around, the farm has worked so, so much better at getting me what I need. Look, at I've got like three, sta over three stacks of the heads, plus loads of coal. It, it really has been a very, very productive time. I was getting a little bit chilly, so I've just put my 4 million subscribers hoodie on, which is available at sp77.store. I can also offload all of these coal blocks. Apparently, I'd run out of them. And put all of the heads into here. And now I can get back to the end and back to the big mission of removing the entire end island. In order for the wither machine to work that's going to destroy the obsidian pillars, the actual end stone around the bases needs to be removed all the way down to the void. I'm estimating it probably needs to be about this wide around it to have space for the machine, but then all the way around. And if you think I'm going to do this by hand, you've got another thing coming. We've got to use TNT. But before I want to start using TNT and all that, I need to get these four dragons moved out to safety, which will mean grabbing some redstone items to make flying machines. That is every item I need. <laughs> Not too much, thankfully. Should also grab a few more firework rockets because I don't want to get caught in somewhere like flying over the void and run out of them. That would definitely be a disaster. Now I need to do a little bit of building, which is easy enough because they're quite straightforward flying machines. And I have to make sure there's obsidian at the other end in the perfect spot. Otherwise, they would just float off into the great void of nothingness. I'm going to place this. It should set off. Push the dragon along to exactly where I want it. Anyone, pack it in. You're ruining this moment for me. What do you think? Okay, you know, whoa, ladies and gentlemen, don't die, SP. Come on. The most pointless waste of a totem ever there. Let's, let's line that up and maybe try to be a, a little more. Okay. I, I just about to say I need to be a little bit more careful than I do that. Just get out of here. All right, just pack it in. Anyway, yeah, it stops up the obsidian and I can get busy moving all of the other ones. All of them have successfully been moved away now. I don't know why, but I can hear a dragon flying around. I just can't see it. But if I go down here, I can hear the noises. I can only guess that there is one somewhere underground. Have I found it? Is this his wing? What are you doing down here? And more importantly, how am I going to get rid of you? Can I hit... Okay, this is, this is kind of working. If I... Well, do I have to just take the hits as well? Yeah, this isn't working. I think a better idea is to go in the end of chest, grab the bow... Grab the arrows and get busy lighting it up. And there we go. It's been defeated and it is dying in the spot you'd expect it to right in the middle. And now it is true. I have built many things in the end. There's some good stuff, but it has all got to go. Every single thing. And I know I said I wanted to remove the obsidian towers. <laughs> Look at that hole. But they're best done at the end. It is best if I remove the end stone first and there is space for the wither machine. I'll be using TNT to destroy the end. Things like this obsidian cage probably need to be removed. I'll also manually mine up that beacon. Don't want it all to be blown up. That You know, some helpful items there. But everything else is going to be destroyed by TNT. Everything's nearly removed that needs to be. I just need to find a place for all that bow mill. It was for the old dragon farm of a thousand days. What a blast from the past that was. I'm just collecting little pistons here and there as well. This water's also got to go. Once upon a time, the obsidian farm was good to me. I've got a lot of it that I needed. But I'll have to make a new version of it at some point when the end base is completed. I would like to gather up loads of materials here, so... 
I'm going to drop off all this stuff into this chest right here. And then grab a few shulker boxes to hold some items, such as all of that bone meal and all of this subsidian. It's kind of sad that all this stuff is, is going to go, isn't it? You know, it's memories. It's, it's a good old farm back in the day, but... There's bigger and better things ahead. I've nearly removed absolutely everything here, but my inventory's kind of full. So I'm going to empty off again, and I can remove the last few little bits. That does include the void trading station, which I'm a little bit sad to see go, because it's been a very, very good little thing to me. I'll probably rebuild it later, but right now it will be a problem, and it needs to be removed. I think that's that. I think I'm ready to destroy absolutely everything else. Can't believe I ran out of inventory space again. Man, there's so many stuff to mine up in this place, isn't there? After giving some thought to what the best course of action is, I'm thinking I should manually remove some of the tops of the very tallest towers. And if I build the World Eater at this level, which is level 96, the TNT will fall far enough that it will break all of the endstone on the entire island. I also think another dragon has appeared in the endstone. I don't know where. I, I guess I'll find it later on. And if I'm going to be mining the tops of some of these pillars, I think... A new beacon needs to be set up, which once again means offloading items, hopefully for the final time. What on earth? Why are you guys flying again? You're meant to be frozen. Are you kidding me? It just... It just flew that one off into oblivion. Oh my, well at least you're out of the way I suppose. You on the other hand are kind of a nuisance, but I'll leave you alone for now. Instead, I will just focus on quickly building a beacon, setting it to give me haste too, and then I can shave off the top of these pillars. Although before I'm doing that, I should probably get rid of the bedrock and... Mining it ain't gonna work, but thankfully TNT mixed with pistons and trapdoors will get the job done nicely. I'm pretty sure this is the setup. It's been a while since I've done it, but all being well, when I flick this lever, it should break the bedrock. Yes, it did. Also, I don't know what we're doing with another escape dragon. I thought it froze over there, but apparently it, uh, it's flying around again. It really should be possible for it to do that with all the obsidian up there. I, I, yeah, I don't know how it is, but I'll just leave it to it and continue. That's another one done, which means there's just eight more to go. That stupid dragon destroyed my beacon. I'm glad you're frozen now. I didn't know the could destroy the actual beacon block. What a waste. And that is every single one done. Which means I can repair my beacon and then trim down the tops of these towers so that the world eater will fit above it. And at long last, I think I'm happy with how tall the pillars are. Mining every single bit of obsidian felt like a massive mission. But on the positive side, it has got me a lot of extra obsidian. Every single item has been gathered up that is going to allow me to make the TNT world eating machine. But before I can build that and set it off, I do need to get rid of this dragon, which is, yeah, co completely in the way. I'll do that by building a nice little flying machine that will push you away. And then it's operation, destroy everything. Which will start with both of these beacons. Also got to remove stuff like this water. And cover up the end portal with obsidian. Because otherwise TNT would go through and then completely destroy spawn. Yeah, I definitely don't want that to happen. I'll also do the same thing with this end gateway there. Because I've got a void trader on the other side that I definitely don't want getting ruined. That's both the beacons completely gone. And I'm going to build three of these world eating machines. Starting with the first one right here. I've built this machine many times before for doing world eating projects. So it's, it's going to be similar to that. Because I know it works well. And this is going to be one of the easier projects. Because there's no lava and there's no water in the end. So it's it just basically just blow it up. And the only annoying thing that I really have to worry about is all those obsidian pillars just getting rid of them. Everything else is very straightforward. Anyway, the first of these machines is done. So now it's time for the other two. And that is every single one of them done. I can remove this temporary endstone platform. Mission accomplished. And with that, every single thing is ready. I'll just break this little bit of endstone scaffolding. It probably could just stay where it is, but I'm, I'm getting rid of it anyway. Only one thing could go wrong now, and that is for my pickaxe to break. As you can see, it's very low on durability. It is at 66. I'm kind of confident, though, that I can remember to repair it before it runs out. And I've got a plant... Hello, Enderman. What are you doing up here? But I've got a plan on how I'm going to repair it as well. The Enderman farm. That Enderman farm down there has got to be the perfect place to do it. I just hope it lasts till then because I keep... My, I want to basically mine away this entire bridge and then go. And I'm worried that it might run out. But it seems to have just about stood the test of time. All these Endermen can now be dealt with. And the pickaxe repaired. Including my Elytra too. That's mission accomplished. And I'll just quickly get myself up to level 1005. So now I couldn't be more ready. Couldn't be more ready to destroy the entire end. I do need to get rid of these little flying machines too. Because I don't want TNT to land on them and then hurt the dragons. <laughs> that would that would just ruin everything if I lose these dragons. Removing the first one wasn't too bad. But getting rid of this one is a bit trickier. Because, yeah, the, the dragon's too close. But I think that should be enough. I can't get rid of that bit of endstone. But everything else is sorted. So now I can set these off. And watch the entire end get destroyed. All of these seem to be working as intended. And it's just great to see that everything is going according to plan.
machines are finished and pretty much everything has been destroyed. However, there is bits that were missed mainly because of the position. I think was this, I, I, just, I don't know why this bit was missed actually, I couldn't tell. Oh, it's just too low down, right? Same with those over there with the millions of Enderman all stood on. They're just too low down for the TNT jubis, but if I'd have built those TNT things any lower, then they would have blown themselves up on the obsidian pillars. So it's kind of an unavoidable thing, this really. Unless I mine the obsidian pillars to be lower, that, that might have solved it. But anyway, the dragons also have decided to, to, to kind of, they flew for a bit, then they refroze. There's one there and there's, there's one in the middle. The other two, somewhere about. But anyway, I'll get rid of this random little platform at the edge here. And then I can begin to tackle this massive bit right here. It would probably make a lot of sense for me to build a beacon in the middle so that I then have haste to and can mine all this endstone much, much faster. Whilst it is a bit of an inconvenience to have to mine this and instead not just have it be blown up. The good thing is I'm getting a load of endstone from this which could come in useful for future builds. Otherwise it would just be lost and I'd have to mine it some other time. So yeah, every, every cloud has a silver lining I suppose. Although I've I haven't just run out of inventory space. I've got so much junk in here. You know what? I'm heading back. I'll get myself back through this portal. Are you going to let me leave? What's the big idea? I just I want to go home. Maybe from here will be better. Yeah, I could. All of this stuff can go into there. And I'll grab an extra shulker box for endstone. Just in case I don't have enough space. I would also like to make it a yellow one. Just because I, I always make the endstone ones yellow. It's the closest thing to that colour. So we'll dye that. I'm also a little bit short on rockets. Two left. When you're in the end and you're over the void... You want to make sure you always have loads, so let's do that. That should be more than enough to keep me going. And with that, I'm ready. I'm ready to head back to the nether and then through to the end where the mining of endstone can continue. i tell you what I would like to do. Just get rid of all these little bits of straggler. It's a good thing that, that it's so easy to see. Like, endstone just shows up really, really well against the dark background of the end. So I can, yeah, just tell anywhere where there's a little bit that needs removing super, super easily. Ah, this is where that dragon was and I couldn't, I couldn't get past. So I can mine both of these now. The, yeah, the dragon decided to fly back that way, which is it's one of them. A little bit annoying, but not the end of the world. Can I do this in midair? Oh, I can! And for this one, I shall land a very precise flight, which is all good practice for getting good with my Electra. I think once I mine that and... Oh, these little bits under the obsidian couldn't be broken. But yeah, once they're... Oh, there's one more piece there. But yeah, well, once they're gone, there's just that stuff underneath. But I think all the random little bits are finished and sorted. Just this little bit of floating obsidian. I can't really remember what it's from. But it is still definitely worth getting rid of. Now, I think all I've got to focus on removing... There is stuff up there that I'll eventually get rid of. But I've mainly just got to focus on removing all of the endstone in this main bulk of it. We'll take a bit of mining. There's also this underneath. Shall I get rid of this now? There's a lot of string down here, you know. See you later, string. Get ready to be voided. Who remembers that challenge? Was it in 5,000 days or somewhere around that day mark? It was a, a very interesting and, and risky moment. That is job done. And now to get busy mining. That is all now completely removed. Basically just me and a bunch of Endermans on this platform. And the beacon can be mined up as well. Getting rid of every single bit of Enderstone took me way longer than I expected to. But... It is now officially done. And I now have the joy of removing all of these obsidian pillars using withers. If it sounds complicated, that's because it, 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 it kind of is. After a little bit of research and testing, I've realized that I can't yet use the wither pillar eaters. To make sure that they don't break, I'm going to have to build an end mob switch. And the easiest way for me to do that is basically going to be to get two villagers to the end. At least I would have to do that unless I already have some villagers in the end. Talk about falling into place. This is absolutely perfect. I can simply press this button, send a villager, uh, hopefully, yeah, through the end gateway. And I'm actually going to need two of them, so let's, let's send you as well. Then if I go through... Are you guys all right? Don't take damage. Stay safe. You don't look like you're staying safe. Let's just get you nice and uh, platformed below, should we say. Then I need to decide where I'm actually going to put this mob switch. I don't really want to put it in the middle above the end fountain because... Yeah, the, the dragons have a habit of flying around over there. Instead, somewhere underneath seems like the best place to do this. This mob switch is going to require quite a lot of materials, to be honest. So I'm just going to start gathering up every single one. And here is every single item that is going to be needed. So now I can get to the end and get building. It's a very similar build to what I did for the hero of the village farm. And I shall begin by building the villager breeder. Every bit of dirt is placed. So now I can start adding the slabs, which need to be waterlogged. But unfortunately, I, I don't have an infinite water source. So I'll have to fly back to grab some ice. A stack of that will make water storage much, much easier. And I can refill the bucket right there. The only problem with this being the only platform in the whole area is... Yeah, it's just covered in endermen. I can just kind of punch them off like that, but you've got to make sure you actually get them off. And with that, the platform is pretty much empty. Oi, leave my farm alone, picking up my dirt. Who do you think you are? I get distracted way too easily. Anyway, I shall grab this netherite hoe and begin tilling the ground. Oh man, I wasn't joking when I said this. Yeah, you want to get angry? 
I have every right to be angry with you. Stealing farmland like they own the place, right? But I think the important thing here is going to be to get the carrots down as soon as possible, which I can simply do by planting them. Apparently, these edges aren't light enough. And to be honest, it'd probably be better if I just first do all of the walls, then I can do all of the lights, and then I can properly plant down every single carrot. This is looking good, and I might as well get the villagers in now, which means building a massive railway bridge all the way to this platform up here. And I actually don't have enough dirt or rails for that, so it is time for a restock. I've made it up here with the bridge, and thankfully the journey across is very much downhill for most of it, which means I don't have to worry about powered rails. To be honest, the momentum should get them very, very far. I'll, I'll just go with powered rails for this last little bit. Every single one is placed, so now to give them some power with the levers. And you, good sir, can begin your journey down. And so can you. Don't think you're exempt from it. Look at him. Go. Look at the speed. He's loving it. I bet he's never had such a great... No Enderman. Oh, no. They're all in the way. Causing real issues, Enderman. I don't need this. Pretty sure once they're gone, they won't be able to spawn it. Do you mind? It's good job I've got Elytra. As I was saying, once they're gone, they can't spawn on the bridge again because it's powered rails on top. You two are in. So, okay, well, I need the glass, as I was about to say. Welcome to your new home. I don't know how we're going to actually get you out of there. There you go. Now, if you could please get jobs and get to work, that would be amazing. And in the meantime, I'm going to block this up and begin work on this bottom part of the mob switch. This is the bit that's going to eject the villagers into this little spot. This is where they'll get to, well, they'll get infected here. Then they'll all be staying in there. And this little bit right here is what is going to sort them. It's starting to come together. This spot right here is where the guy that's going to infect him is going to be. So I'll have to get him at some point. And the machine that sorts the baby villagers from the adults and then the adults can go into here is, is, is going to be sorted next. So I'll just continue building. Also nice to see that these two are actually doing some work. And I'll do a temporary little area for them here with some beds. So they'll hopefully start getting me some babies. Glad to see this is kind of work because my villagers are sleeping. I better not try sleep with them otherwise I, I will blow up. Instead I'll go home and sleep and then they won't mind me destroying those beds and building a bigger bed area. Alright guys, show's over. Come on. Get, get back to work. I've got stuff to do here. The bed area has now been significantly expanded and now I've got to get a fella into that slot which once again should be fairly easy the only difference this time is that the bridge needs to connect to that obsidian platform I've almost made the new bridge I'm just getting rid of these rails so that they can be used instead for this straight right here next I'll get every single bit levered up and operation trap him can begin it is dark which is perfect so first things first I'll have to disable the mob switch and then mobs should be spawning in and I can start luring them it would also be a good idea to grab a name tag for them and the one with the sword is actually exactly what I want through the portal he shall go and then you and me are off to this end portal man I should give him some swiftness or something it's a shame I don't have any that I can splash on him because he is so so slow now, I can go in there, go and get to- Oh my goodness, you pack a punch. Yeah, I suppose I have taken my armor off, which hasn't helped. I mainly did it because of the thorns, but rather than risk death, maybe I should put some other ones on instead. Does he just walk straight in? Oh, well, that's very handy. Now, okay, there's just stuff everywhere, but just hopefully he gets in the mic. Okay, we've got an Enderman in the mic. Oh, that's, that's very annoying. And, and you- Oh, it's all gone wrong. Stupid Enderman are picking up my dirt blocks. You're on the correct- Oh, not quite. Now you're on the correct track. Yeah, it cost me a totem, I don't care. Because he is in the machine. Well, he was kind of in the machine. There, he's gone in himself now. And I can now wait for this breeder here to get me every single villager that I need. There are plenty of villagers now here ready and waiting. Some more on the way too. But to get all of them to be persistent mobs, I need to trade with them. And I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't really have the emeralds for that. Not to worry though, because I know a very nearby place that does. Yes, the Void Trader. Down here, there should be loads and loads in that chest. Oh, there's a few in there, and there's loads more here. So to set up the mob switch, I simply trade with the villager once, and then push this. He goes through. He's having his, his, his everything go wrong over there. Then I trade with the next one, and just keep repeating it. And because they've been traded with once, they will be persistent. They won't ever despawn. But they will still count towards the mob cap and stop Enderman from spawning. Well, this one's holding a shovel. That means that he won't count towards the mob cap. So he's, he's got to be gotten rid of. It's just something that happens every now and again when these guys get infected. And that is the last villager that I have that's an adult. And I've got a grand total of 23 in there. So it's, it's, it's going well. But I need to wait for you guys to grow up. And you guys to breed me more baby villagers. Pretty sure the breeding part doesn't happen when they're trying to sleep. And it is technically nighttime, Even though you can't tell in the end. What are you doing it? Why Why are these deciding that they don't have to be frozen anymore? Very annoying. I was going to try and go through the end portal and sleep, but with that there, it's probably going to be hard work. So instead, whilst they breed me more villagers, I'm going to tidy up the whole area. Which involves spleef and enderman. Sorry, guys, don't take it personal, but this is very, very fun indeed. The end is definitely starting to look much, much tidier. Don't really know what to do with all these bricks. I'm just going to craft them and 
shove him in a shulker box. And I think the next thing I should get done is remove all of these little world eater things. With the end completely destroyed, there's no reason to be here now. Although the sad thing is that most of the resources are probably going to end up going into the void. Not a lot I can do about that because, well, unless I just fly after them, but yeah, I don't really fancy that. But on the positive side, it's not like these resources are in short supply or anything like that. Although on the positive side, most of the resources I break on this one can be picked up. Job done. All of them are now gone. And I might as well remove this little flying machine. This, oh, I fell. As I was saying, I might as well remove this little flying machine that was there to push the dragons away. Look at this. More villagers grown up that are ready to be put into the system. And whilst I wait for more, I'm also going to get rid of these big leaf bridges. There's one there and one there. I don't need them because I have a light trick anyway and I just fly around. That is that one sorted and also this one. And in fact, whilst I'm in the area, I might as well take out some of these guys so that my Elytra will be fully repaired. And my pickaxe for that matter as well. I do also need to remove all these broken items right at the very top here. The old dragon destroyer I used to have. Which was great until I decided to spawn in 100 dragons and they, <laughs> they completely destroyed it. Yeah, they got their own back on me. It's enough of a chance to land on a single piece of obsidian in a purple world. But making it onto one measly little iron bar. Now that, that is a real challenge. Challenge that I'm sure I can be successful in. Yes, I did it! All that just so I can mine it up. I have to say, I'm loving the fact that my end is just starting to look so clean and tidy. Nearly every single thing is gone. Mission has been accomplished. And there's once again a few more villagers available. And the inventory is looking a little bit full, so I'm going to try and get through this middle portal. Not easy with you guys flapping about in it, but I'm sure if I just sneak in underneath... There we go. And then I can offload all of these items. I'm hoping that this pushes away the other one without getting destroyed by that one. It, it seems to be working okay. And the other one could finally perch and hopefully fly right at me. That's it. And be froze. I have also just run out of fire rockets, so if I miss this jump... Ah, just kidding, I don't care. Um, <laughs> if I actually miss something here, though, I will die. Better top myself up. Okay, it's the last stack as well. Oh, man, I completely forgot about this one. I pushed it so, so far away. Wait, did it go through an end game? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Right, well, I'll, I'll worry about it later. Instead, I'm just going to concentrate on finishing this mob switch. And once you are sorted, every single one is in that needs to be. By my calculations, there's about 90 of the little fellas trapped there. And I shall now take this opportunity to mine up the entire thing. There's really no point in me keeping it here because I have no use for it now that the mob switch is complete. And I'll be honest, I don't know what's going to happen to these villagers and the baby bill. Oh, I can't be evil, can I? But yeah... <laughs> It's, it's not going to be good. I'll just make it so that the villagers can get out of here. And then maybe in the massive end base, we can have villagers roaming around. That, that could be an idea. I'll try and keep them alive. All right, guys, I know I've removed the walls, but seriously, if, if you walk into the void, it, it's on you. Well, one way or another, they've all walked off to different spots. I, I, I don't know why you think going down here was a good idea, but I'll, I'll leave you to it. Sorry, villager, there was always going to be casualties and, and you are going to have to be one of them. I feel kind of evil and it makes it even worse knowing that... Uh, yeah, there's some other ones on the menu too. Bye, good sir. Yep, go and see the other villager down there. I'll let those two babies grow up so that they can go into there with all the other ones. But you guys, yeah, just just swim for your life. That's it. Yeah, it it's all going wrong for you. That's kind of crazy. Look at me swim for his life. Oh, and there he goes. <laughs> Any others? Yeah, I don't know why I'm enjoying this so much. Just just sending them into the... Oh, no, you survivor. Just kidding, you know. So I won't break anything more up here until those two have grown up. Isn't it cool that that's a mob switch right there as well? <laughs> it just doesn't look like it, does it? This Enderman farm is far enough away from the mob switch that it still works. That's good news. In that case, I'll probably keep the mob switch permanently because I won't want them wandering all over the end hub. And I can now finally begin building the machine that will destroy the obsidian pillars. I've got everything I need. It's not actually that much. Probably less than what the mob switch is, which is good. And also, before I go there, I've just remembered I've run out of firework rockets. So it might be a good idea to... Do you mind? I'm just, just trying to commentate here. As I was saying, it might be a good idea to craft a few more just so that I don't run out whilst in a sticky situation. Because seriously, falling into the void and not being able to do anything about it would be a bit of a nightmare. Now, the first machine I'm going to build is for the biggest pillar here, which is this one. All the others are 9 wide or less, but this one is 11 wide. So thank goodness I'm not going to have to manually mine it. This right here is where the withers are going to go. I'm obviously not going to spawn them in just yet. They're going to be put on top of these walls so that they get trapped in the machine. And then over this side, there's going to be an iron golem that they are going to try and shoot at. I'm not going to spawn him in for now, but I'll just build everything except for put the pumpkin on top. And because the withers are going to be breaking the obsidian bit by bit as they get pushed downwards, I need the entire machine to be pushed down, which is why we've got slime like this with pistons and observers there, just to make sure that the entire machine keeps moving down. And now I need to build up the redstone on this side above the withers so that I can connect it to that and, and then the whole machine will work. Theoretically, anyway, it should. So above these withers, there's going to be obsidian just so that when they spawn in, they don't fly away. This, along with the 
walls should keep him into position. And then there needs to be more slime and pistons redstone on this side. And there's also going to be a snow golem over here, which is going to be the thing that makes the withers angry. And then that's what will make him destroy the obsidian. The redstone's almost all done. It's starting to look pretty complicated, isn't it? But I apparently I didn't bring enough slime. I'm, I'm two blocks short. And there also has to be a minecart here. And I've got to do it cleverly. If I just put it straight on top of the rail, it would set the TNT off and blow up the whole thing. So instead, I'll steal a piston and push it on like that. There we go. It's working fine. Also, apparently I did bring enough slime. I'm just blind and it was in a shulker box. So anyway, that is that sorted. And now I've just got to build a rail system here that's going to connect up the snow golem. There we go. It's, it's near enough done. I just need one more block and I didn't bring enough. But I'm going home anyway because I have to waterlog these slabs along the middle here. Doing that will stop this TNT from blowing up the whole machine. Kind of an important thing. Also, those baby villagers have now grown up so I can destroy almost all of this, except for this container right here that they're in. There's the ice that I need, plus a bucket, and also one more of these smooth stone blocks. That's that bit done. And then this is filled in with water. Oh, I did not mean to break that slab. Oh, just about saved it before it went. Oh no, don't break the machine down there. I think it was okay because the chain stopped it going anywhere, but it, it could have gone wrong. Anyway, then I can put the slabs on top and it's done. Theoretically, it is ready to break the entirety of this obsidian pillar. I really hope this works. Now, the first step is to spawn in the iron golem. Then I spawn in the snow golem and have to get him in a minecart just like that. And now for the fun part, spawning in the withers. They are all in. I have to get well away from them. Otherwise, they will start attacking me. I don't want that. I want them to attack the golem. So there we go. They're all in. I think it all looks okay. Yet another one is built. And with this one, I'm definitely worried about that dragon and that dragon. I think I just moved them both away. Although to do that, I'm going to need more sticky pistons and some endstone. There's the sticky pistons. And there is the endstone. Down to my last two firework rockets as well. This is the time where you get some more out. But to be mindful of that all episode working over the void. Just don't run out of them. And the good news is, I seem to be able to build the flying machine up here. Which is much easier than having to try and suspend it above something. All it needs is one more observer. And this first one is ready. Basically, I need them far away enough so that I can destroy this pillar without them being too near the withers. And I would say this distance definitely fits the bill. And now to get rid of you in what should also be a very easy manner. And on a side note, it also means I can get rid of this endstone bridge I had to make earlier. So that, that definitely tidies things up too. It went through the end gateway. I, I didn't mean to do that. I've, that's two I've sent to. I suppose it's easy having them through there and then I can bring them back later. I've just got to make sure I remember which end gateways I actually sent them through. That's that sorted. Let's get golem number one in, then golem number two, and then I can run the pillar destroyer again. I just love watching this machine do its thing. It, it's so, so cool. So you've seen how the pillar removal method works. I'm just going to keep repeating it on every single tower until everything is gone. And now the last one has reached the bottom. Getting rid of all these towers has took me so long that I might have a shave and a haircut in the time. But now I can get rid of the last of the withers, which I've, I've become quite good at doing. There we go. And for the final time, the machine can be destroyed. That's mission accomplished. Just got this little bit right at the top to mine. And you'll also notice that there's one tower that I haven't fully gotten rid of. Also, apparently there's one redstone block that I also haven't fully gotten rid of. Well, this is the easiest one, so I'll, I'll get rid of that first. And yeah, basically this tower, I've been manually mining it. It's not a massive one, but I was mining it as the other machines were working. So I think it still makes sense to completely mine this one up by hand and then the project is done. And finally I'm just about getting to the bottom of this. It would have been a lot smarter for me to set up a beacon. It would have saved me a lot of time but I was, I was too lazy to do that. Instead it's just been slow and steady me mining away obsidian. And I got quite a lot from it. There's, there's stuff in the shulker box as well. You know probably a shulker box is worth from all this actually. Which is not too shabby. And the end is now completely emptied of everything. What a great day. Finally, it'll be ready for me to build my massive end hub. I do want to get rid of that bit of redstone stuff just by the dragon. Apparently that end stone's here to stay. Never mind. But yeah, it looks so strange out here. I mean, imagine if those two farms weren't here and, and the mobs down there. It is it is bizarre though. The entire end completely destroyed. And it's ready for me to build my massive new end hub there. I'll also take this opportunity to drop off all the resources. That makes everything feel a lot better and a lot more organized. I also remember building this wheat farm and never actually using it. And at this point, every single wheat has grown. So I want to see what a full usage of it gets me. Let's have a look. So look at that. The whole thing harvests. Oh, fantastic. Look at it go. And it all should go into the hoppers. Look at it tumbling down. It looks amazing. Apparently too much for the hoppers to cope with. It's just off. Okay, yeah, there's a lot in there. And it looks like it's mainly been seeds that can't get into the hoppers. So that's fine because I actually need to collect a load of them to replant everything. My goodness, it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to to uh, replant it all. Also, if you land in the middle of the farmland, you won't break them. So that's, that's what I was trying to do there. But despite the fact that it took me so long, it's still not finished filtering them all into the chest. Wow, there's loads and loads of wheat. 
I definitely want to still see how much it gets me, but I'm not just going to sit there and wait. I'll, I'll go and... Oh, that's a torch, not a firework. As I was saying, I'll come back in a bit once it's finished filtering through and see how much it actually got me. And the thing I'll do whilst I wait is I think I'm going to get rid of this. You know, it's it just for me, it's a bit of an eyesore up here. Like, I reckon there's enough villagers in this village now. You know, it's, it's a bustling thing. A lot of them live inside this giant palace. Look at them. They love it. I th they're everywhere. I think maybe sometimes they have casualties, though, because they walk off and then they just... They fall down like that. <laughs> but generally speaking, they manage all right. So yeah, I, I don't want to keep this villager breeder here. If I had another one, I'd probably put it underground anyway. I just feel like this entire thing looks ugly at world height. Like when I look across my world, I don't want to see a giant structure in the sky. All right, yes, I know we've got a planet there. That's okay. But we don't need this to be here as well. I've also just realized how annoying it's going to be to get rid of this water tube. It'll probably be handy to grab a load of dirt to use as temporary blocks to plug up the water. In hindsight, sponge might have been a better idea. But you know what? It's done now. So I'll get back to mining it all away. The massive dirt I saw is gone. And to, I could just keep this little thing here and continue having them breed me villagers. I mean, it's it's not that bad, is it now? Yeah, I think it's fine. Before when it was a massive dirt thing, I didn't like it, but now I, I think it is fine. And I'm not too happy with the condition of my armor, these this pickaxe, these shears, you know, things like that. So I think some time at an XP farm could be a good idea. And the one I'm going to choose is the fortress farm that just basically gets me blazes and pigment. As I think it's faster than the witherhead one I made, but you know what? Let's just test that out. What? Look at you all kidding out. Out in your fancy chain. I'll just, I'll just test out and see how fast this one is. I'd say my answer is not fast enough. I mean, it, it, basically it needs to be something that gives me a non-stop constant stream of XP and this farm does not do that. So I'll flick this lever to turn the farm on. And I was going to say, let's see how fast this farm goes, but I think something's interfering with the rates because it's it's very slow. Yeah, everything's still spawning on this farm. Y yeah, I've kind of made these farms clash. I'll have to fix that at some point. So when it comes to getting XP, there's one place that I know that is the most reliable. It may not be the fastest farm in my world, but my goodness, the old gold farm really does work well. Well, built on 200 days and it is still the most reliable one. A apart from my Ravager one, but that just needs those of TNT, so it takes too much effort. But yeah, this one here does indeed work very, very well. That's enough of that. I'm not going to use it to get myself actual XP levels. And everything from this farm has filtered through, giving me a double chest and a half of wheat seeds and pretty much a double chest full of wheat. That's fantastic. And I'm very glad that wheat can be condensed into hay bales. That's going to make life and storage so much easier. I'll chuck all of that into this chest. And I'd love to keep going and get to 7,000 days in this video, but guys, I'll be honest, I, I just don't have time. The end hub still isn't done. I've got loads and loads of plans, but if I carry on, it's going to be another couple of months before I get this video finished. Plus, I'm going to hold it today, so that's another two weeks I'm away. I just, I just don't want to leave it too long. I know I said I would aim for 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 days each video, but I get the feeling you don't want to wait that much. So, I reckon if I end it here, at least you got a video in the next episode we can complete the end hub. Because completely destroying the entire end was a very, very cool project. But what I'm going to build here to replace it will be even more amazing. Also, guys, I've released a brand new map on the Bedrock Marketplace. It's my 100 days hardcore challenge where you have loads of quests to complete. It's got different quests. There are SP77 tokens. There's new bosses and loads, loads more. So you can get it now on the Minecraft Marketplace. Link is in the description. And thanks for watching, guys. That was 6,224 days in hardcore Minecraft.